In this video, we're going to look at role-based access for PowerShell Universal. We'll configure some roles, and then we'll assign those roles to resources within PowerShell Universal and see how it affects the behavior of users trying to access those resources. So first of all, when you first uh, install PowerShell Universal, you're going to have a, a default set of roles that um, offer different operations inside uh, PowerShell Universal. So first is the administrator role, and they can pretty much do anything inside PowerShell Universal. They can update um, authentication and identities. They can set settings for the PowerShell Universal instance. Then you have the operator role. Um, they can create scripts, APIs, they can edit dashboards, all that kind of stuff, but they won't be able to actually modify the PowerShell Universal settings or security settings. The reader role is read-only access. Uh, they can't make any changes to the system and they can't execute scripts. Execute is similar to the reader, where they can't actually edit anything inside the um, PowerShell Universal Admin Console or via the APIs, but they can execute scripts. And then finally, the user um, group or role is uh, just it doesn't have any access to the actual PowerShell Universal Admin Console, but it can be assigned resources like dashboards and pages and APIs. So when you first uh, install PowerShell Universal, uh, each one of these scripts will uh, or each one of these roles will have a script defined that uh, determines how this role is assigned. So we have an authentication step and then an authorization step. In my case, I'm using Windows authentication um, for my authentication step. And then each one of these scripts is running for the authorization step. And the idea being we're going to get some information from the uh, Windows authentication provider. And that's going to be available on this user object. And then we can um, run a policy to uh, determine whether or not they're an administrator. So by default, everything returns true. So if you want to change that, um, you can come in and um, adjust these policies to return false. So what we're going to do is we're going to update one of these policies to enforce uh, a local group membership that I have for my user. And to view what your local group membership is, um, it, it kind of depends on your authentication provider. Some authentication providers won't automatically uh, provide claim information like group membership. But with Windows authentication, if you click this view claim information button, you'll see that I actually have my local group access or uh, memberships listed as SIDs inside my, my claims for my user. So the Windows authentication system actually provided that to me automatically, and I didn't have to um, you know, do any special lookups. If you're using OpenID Connect with Azure Active Directory or um, systems like Okta, you can configure it to return your group membership from those systems, and it'll actually show up kind of the same way in here. Um, I think, depending on the system you use, it might just be the name rather than a SID. Uh, but in this case, it's a SID. So what I can do to actually um, assign a group to a role is take the SID and use that to look it up on the user object as they're logging in. So uh, first of all, what I want to do here is I will um, see like you know what these groups are. So you can do that by using the get local group commandlet if you're using um, local groups. And you could do get AD group if you're using Active Directory groups. And I'm just going to pass in, I think it's the SID. And I don't know why it puts AWS in front of there, but I'll get rid of that. And you can see this is a SID for one of my groups. And this group is the dashboard admin admins group. So if I look at my get local group membership for dashboard admins, you'll see that my user is part of that group. Um, and I'm the only user in that group. So I want to actually um, pretty much establish that group as the admin account. So there's two ways I can do that. First, I'm going to do it via um, the policy script. So if you go, uh, you're going to want the claim type and the claim value. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go into our policy script. And we can say user dot has claim. I'm going to put in my group SID claim identifier. And then I want the SID that I'm checking for. So now I can put that in there. So pretty much what this is going to do is when the user logs in, it's going to verify that they have this group membership. And if they don't, this uh, method will return false and they won't have access to the admin features. So if we want to take a look at what that looks like, we can actually go to new in private window and I'll access my um, or my uh, PowerShell Universal uh, instance from with another user account. So I just have this IES user account here for testing. And if I log in with this, you can see that on the left hand side, I no longer have settings or security. So I can't actually edit those um, via this account anymore because it's not an administrator account. It is still an operator account, so I could create scripts and folders. 
I can create um, endpoints and that kind of thing. All right, so now that I've kind of looked at um, one way to do this, the other way you can do this is actually by doing um, role to claim mapping. Since lots of times this is all that needs to be in the, um, the PowerShell script, uh, where we're checking for a group SID and, or a group, a claim type and a claim value. Um, you can also uh, kind of shortcut the whole script part and you can just enter that in here. So if we wanted to, again, adjust this, we could take this group SID, go here, there, and then put the uh, actual value in here and put that in there. So then I click OK, and now my, my role is actually doing the exact same thing I was doing before, just without a script. So the reason you would pick one over the other is like this is faster and typically easier to configure. The other one is um, more versatile. Like if there's other things you need to do inside your scripts, you can, you can do that inside your policy scripts. Um, the other thing that you can do, uh, rather than um, relying on this type of like execution of the, either the PowerShell script or the, the claims value is you can assign roles to users directly. So if you have a user in here, you'll see that by default they're policy defined, which means we run the role script or we do the claim to value mapping. Um, but you can also just assign a role to a user. So when we see that role, that user um, log in, they're going to get that role automatically. And we're not going to even look at the policy scripts for that user. Um, so yeah, so now we have the role of claim mapping kind of configured for the administrator account. And um, this is actually faster because we don't have to execute any PowerShell script on the back end to uh, evaluate roles. So if you can do this this way, I would recommend it. Um, the other thing that we can do on this page is we can also create custom roles. So custom roles are similar to the user role in that they won't provide any like access to um, the admin console unless you are using access controls, which is actually covered in a different course. But um, by default, they're just for assigning resources to. So um, you could assign, you know, you could create like a dashboard one role and assign it to one of your dashboards. Um, and then only users for that role would be able to access that da dashboard. All right, so now that we've established a couple of roles, let's take a look at how we can modify some of the resources to uh, use these roles. So I have um, a set of uh, endpoints here defined, and um, I have a post endpoint, a get, and a put endpoint for creating users. And I have authentication enabled on all of them. So if I were to come in um, to one of you know my PowerShell windows here, uh, and grab this uh, URL and then try to execute it, you're gonna see I get a 401 unauthorized because I didn't pass any credentials in or anything like that. But if I were to um, use default authentication, which is like passing your um, Windows credentials in, uh, and I'll have to do allow unencrypted authentication because I don't have HTTPS on in this instance, uh, you can see that I don't get the 401 unauthorized, but um, there's no data in there. So, um, yeah, so I'm accessing the API successfully in that in that case. So let's actually assign a role to these endpoints. So for the post, I'm going to make it so that only administrators can uh, do a post. And what I want to do here is select administrators. So this can be one or more roles. So if I wanted administrators and operators to be able to do this, I could select one or more there. And you can see the role is now displayed there. And then uh, let's do for... Um, you know, uh, a get, maybe we only want um, users with the reader role, but maybe not a user role to access um, the get. All right, so now let's take a look at what, what that looks like. So I am going to uh, call invoke rest method again. This time I'm going to do a method post, and I'm going to set the body to an object. I'm just going to create a new user object. Oops, my name. Uh, convert that to JSON. And I will send that to my user endpoint. And you can see that it returned what I sent up there. So let's do that again. Um, we'll send Bill up there. And what this is doing in my um, endpoint, if you're curious, is that it's uh, using a cache, an array list cache of objects. And it's just adding each one of these users to that list as I add them. So if I kind of went the opposite way and did a, a get, now I can see that my two uh, users are being returned. 
But I have another PowerShell console running here, and this one's running as that IIS user. And if you recall, this user um, is not an administrator. So if we actually do this invoke rest method, where we're using the default credentials and we're doing the post, they're going to get a 403 forbidden, which means they authenticated successfully, but they are not authorized to use this API endpoint. But if I were to use the invoke rest method for the get call, you can see that the user can access that because they have the privilege to read um, and not write. So that's kind of how you establish access controls for um, APIs. Um, in terms of dashboards, um, we are actually going to set that similarly as we did with the APIs. And in this case, you can go to edit properties and underneath, if you have authentication enabled, you can set a role. So if we only wanted administrators to access the dashboard, we would just do it this way. And if I open it from this uh, browser window, you'll see that I can view this dashboard. So you may have noticed a whole bunch of toasts pop up there on the right hand side. The other thing that's available in dashboards is when you have authentication enabled, you can actually access the roles just via this roles um, variable. And it's just a list of all the names of the roles that are assigned to this user. So if I do that again, you'll just see that um, I have all the built-in roles as well as um, all the roles that I got through Active Directory as well. So it allows you to kind of tweak your dashboard based on um, what the roles are without actually necessarily uh, limiting the users that can access it. So if I were to try to access this dashboard for my IIS account and I go to um, this dashboard page here, it's going to prompt me. I'll authenticate. And you can see I get a 403 forbidden because this user doesn't have rights to this dashboard. I authenticated successfully, but I did not authorize successfully. And if I were to try to access this dashboard from a completely unauthenticated account, so for example, I came in and I just hit cancel here, you can see I got a 401, which is forbidden. So I was not uh, authenticated to actually even hit the web server. So it didn't even do the roles. All right. Uh, the other place that we can set this uh, is in the authentication settings, or I mean the page pages, uh, the authentication <laughs> settings for the pages. Um, and uh, here you'll see it's very similar to dashboards. Uh, you have an authentication setting, you have whether or not they're an administrator, and it's going to behave the exact same way. So only you know administrators can now access this page. If I click that, I can access it from here. But if I were to try to access that via my IIS account or an unauthenticated account, um, I will not be able to access that page. So uh, it's just um, kind of how you assign roles to a page. So the one other thing I want to show is uh, the execute role. So um, in the execute role, uh, that's for users that you only want to actually to execute scripts, but not like edit anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn operator to false so that now my IIS user will not actually get that execute role. Well, the other thing we could do is also just assign them the execute role. Um, but we'll do it with this because I want to show a, a clear cached claims option. So when you're using Windows authentication, we do cache some of the claims just because otherwise it runs the, um, the user's uh, authorization script over and over again. And to avoid that cache, you can actually click this here. And now since you adjusted the roles, you've cleared the cache. And the next time the IIS user comes in, um, they are going to get their new roles. Because you might, you might see them get old roles if you don't do that. All right, so now let's go to localhost 5000 and we'll authenticate with our user. You can see again, I don't have access to anything except um, the execute roles abilities here. And now you're going to see it's, a, it's a, a lot different because we don't have any create buttons or anything. You can like view things, but we can invoke things. So because I am the execute role, I can actually invoke scripts and run them just fine, um, but I can't edit the scripts, I can't edit schedules or terminals or anything like that. It's all um, read-only except for the ability to execute scripts. So um, kind of a complimentary course to this one, or uh, lecture to this one is the um, access controls. Uh, in, that, um, in that lecture, we'll talk more about how you can do more fine grain controls with access controls um, around scripts. So you can define which scripts users get 
access to, if they can create scripts, if they can edit scripts. Um, you can assign access controls to tags uh, and then tag scripts with the appropriate um, permissions. So uh, I would definitely check that out if you want even more control over um, who has access to what scripts. But uh, in this video, we went over role-based access controls for PowerShell Universal.